Welcome to Three Steps to Sketch. Today we are going to graph y equals secant 2x. So this is a pretty basic secant graph. It doesn't have any shifting going on. And so we'll be using our basic template. So here it is. This will help us keep all our information organized. It has our three steps listed out. And here's our grid and our equation. So first notice that our equation is in the form y equals a secant bx. Okay, that'll be helpful for identifying a and b. And also we see that there is no shifting going on here. We don't have a c or d term. And we'll look at advanced shifted graphs in a later video. All right, so right now we can go ahead and jump into step one where we find our companion equation. And this is what we'll graph first and then take the reciprocal to get to the secant graph that we want. Um, and we'll find all the essential information for that as well as the asymptotes for our secant graph. So the companion equation is simply the reciprocal equation. Everything else is the same. So we know the reci reciprocal of secant is cosine. So our companion equation will be y equals cosine of 2x. And now we're going to go through and essentially get all of the information organized to graph the companion equation. So we start looking at a, which is the leading coefficient, and understood one. Okay, so our amplitude of our cosine graph will be one. That's the distance from midline to maximum or to minimum. We see that b is the coefficient of x. So b is two, it tells us there are two cycles of cosine between zero and two pi. And it also helps us calculate the period of this companion graph. Um, so to get the period, we should calculate two pi divided by b. So two pi divided by two, we have a period of pi. That's the length of one horizontal cycle. All right, now that we have that information, we can go ahead and decide on the scale for each axis. So to get a horizontal scale where all of our points are spread equally, um, we're gonna take the period and divide by four. So for each tick mark on the horizontal axis will be one pi over four. And for our vertical scale, we'll use one. All right, let's go ahead and label our axes. So we'll count on the horizontal axis first, one pi over four, two pi over four, which reduces to pi over two, three pi over four, four pi over four, which is reduced to pi, five pi over four, six pi over four reduces to three pi over two, seven pi over four, and eight pi over four reduces to two pi. All right, so now we're going to label the negative side of the horizontal axis exactly the same, just with negatives. So if you're following along, I'm gonna take a minute, pause and get the axis labeled, and then we'll pick right back up. All right, so we have the full horizontal axis labeled, and now we can label our vertical axis. So counting by ones, easy enough. All right, there we have it. So we have our axes labeled, we have all the information needed for step two where we're going to plot the companion pattern. And before we move on to that, let's go ahead and find the equation for the asymptotes of our secant graph. And to get those asymptotes, all we have to do is take our horizontal transformations or the inputs of our secant function, so two x, and set that equal to our original zeros or x-intercepts of the cosine function. So that's at pi over two plus pi k. Okay, and that'll be a thing that you really just start to know off the top of your head wherever cosine has its original zeros. Um, pi over two plus pi k, it has two every cycle. Okay, and so to get our asymptotes equation, we of course want to get x isolated, so we need to divide everything by two. So dividing each term by two or multiplying by, by one half is another way to think about it you can see our equation for the asymptotes of our final secant graph will be x equals pi over four plus pi over two k. And remember, when we're looking at asymptotes equations, you may have seen this in previous videos on sketching tangent graphs, k is simply an integer. And as you plug in different values for k, you'll get different asymptotes along the graph. So for example, if you substitute in k is zero, you should have an asymptote on your final graph at x equals pi over four. Um, you'd get the next one to the right if you let k be one. So you should see that there will be an asymptote at three pi over four. Um, another one, let k be negative one. So take a minute 
and practice this um, just on some scratch paper, calculate these and see how this equation's going to generate those asymptotes along your graph. All right, now we have all our information, both for our companion equation and our asymptotes. So we're ready for step two, where we plot our companion pattern. So basically, we're just going to do a very light sketch of cosine of 2x. Um, remember that the pattern for cosine is maximum, zero, minimum, zero. And a zero is just another name for an x-intercept. Um, and we know that we start on the y-axis, so our maximum is going to happen at 0, 1. At the first horizontal tick mark, moving to the right, you'll have a 0. At the next horizontal tick mark, your y-coordinate will be the opposite of a. Okay. And at the final horizontal tick mark in the pattern, you'll have another 0. And then your pattern would just repeat. So this is our companion equation graphed, y equals cosine 2x. If you want, you can sketch in the actual cosine graph. This isn't necessary, but you can see that's one cycle of cosine 2x. So now we're ready for step three, and this is the big step. This is, we did all that preliminary work, we sketched our companion pattern, and now we're going to recip, so that's kind of the verb form of take the reciprocal, sketch and repeat. This is where you're turning your cosine graph into the reciprocal graph secant. And so hopefully you've seen what a secant graph looks like. Maybe you've looked at the parent graph, y equals secant x. Um, but basically we're taking the y values of our companion cosine graph and we're going to graph the reciprocal of them um, or we're flipping them if you wanna say it that way. So when we recip the maximum here, of course the reciprocal of one is one, but if you come along the cosine curve, the reciprocal of one half is going to be two. So it creates part of this secant curve. Okay, of course, at what was an x-intercept, we know that you cannot flip zero, so we have a vertical asymptote here for our secant graph. So now we can see, of course, the reciprocal of negative one-half would be negative two, so we have that in two places down here, and the reciprocal of negative one, of course, is just negative one, so you have a secant curve down here. You have another vertical asymptote where there was an original zero at three pi over four. And then you have a similar looking curve as we go on to pi, the reciprocal of one half of course is two. So I'm just picking a few values here. Reciprocal of one is one to show you how we get these secant curves here. But eventually as you've graphed a few secant graphs, you'll just know that this is how it works and thus the term recip. Um, and then, of course, we've been sketching it as we've gone along and as we were taking the reciprocals. And now we just need to repeat this pattern for as many cycles as we want. So I'll show those reciprocals um, being repeated in purple. And so we just repeat this pattern over and over again. So the curve would continue here. Vertical asymptote at 5 pi over 4. We have another part of the secant curve here with really that point at three pi over two negative one being a key point. Another vertical asymptote at seven pi over four. You notice these are happening twice a cycle. And then we have this here. All right, we can do some cycles in the negative direction as well. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put the asymptote here at negative pi over four and sketch the secant curve up. Okay, we'll have a secant curve here. And notice how you're really just plotting those key points. It's one key point, asymptote. Another key point, asymptote. So it's the maximums and minimums from the original companion cosine equation um, are turning into these relative maximums and relative minimums of a secant graph. Okay, sketching this in. And so hopefully you're getting the idea. You just see this pattern is repeating over and over again. Um, and it really becomes rather easy once you get used to it. It just takes a little bit of practice. All right, so there we have it. Here's the graph of y equals secant 2x using the three steps to sketch and our companion graph of cosine 2x. So don't forget to practice a little bit with that asymptotes equation, substituting in the different integer values for k. 
um, that's a really good skill to have. And I'll probably post some videos with um, some really specific worked out examples um, just looking at asymptotes of secant graphs. Um, so be sure to look for that if you're interested. Um, and other neat things to look back at, um, particularly looking at B, um, we said that told us how many cycles happened between zero and two pi. That works for the companion equation, that cosine equation. But if you notice, it's easy to see starting from zero going to two pi. Here is one cycle of secant, and here is another full cycle of secant. So two cycles of secant happen between zero and two pi. And so that's just a neat connection to make kind of back to the basics. Um, and it should also help you feel like your graph is very accurate. It should build up your confidence. Um, so that's all there is to it. Be sure to check out um, the links I'll put in the video description for more worked out examples of secant. And I'll also put some for um, some of the other trick graphs as well. Thanks for watching.